Do you like gum? Do you know what is gum made of? Gum is made of a material that at a certain temperature can form a glass. And you can be asking yourself, glass? I'll explain. Gums are made of a material called polymer. But what is a polymer? Polymer is a chemical made of many repeating units called monomer. But how do monomers create a polymer? Check it out. This is a monomer. When monomers are put together, they form a polymer. But what does it have to do with glass as said before? Polymers have a glass transition temperature, Tg. When the polymer is below its Tg, it becomes more brittle. Take a look at a polymer below its Tg in a brittle stage being hit by an object. At this time, you can see the polymer cracking. Now, take a look at a polymer above its TG in a rubbery state. The ball bounces, showing an elastic behavior above its TG. Now, let us take a look at the effects of temperature on the glass transition seeing how the materials behave below and above the glass transition temperature. Happy sad balls. Two identical balls that differ in an important property, the glass transition temperature. Above the glass transition temperature, a material behaves rubbery, bouncy and stretchy. And below the glass transition temperature, the material behaves more brittle, more strong and stiff. Now, what will happen in this experiment is that the sad ball, the one experiencing the brittle behavior, will be warmed up to a temperature that is higher than its glass transition temperature. And the happy ball, the one experiencing the elastic behavior, will be cooled down using liquid nitrogen to a temperature lower than its glass transition temperature. Now, let us see the results of our experiment. Our predictions were right. The happy ball became a very sad ball, and the sad ball became a happier ball. Now, let's take a look at a more realistic example. Let's use gum, which is made from natural rubber. At a cold temperature, where the temperature is below the glass transition temperature, the gum piece is brittle. But, what what's happened when it's heated?
As you can see, it behaves more elastic because now the temperature is above the glass transition temperature. In this experiment, a polystyrene cup will be held under oil with a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. The result will be explained afterwards. Polystyrene is a well-known polymer that's widely used by the industry. It has the following structure. And in this experiment, we'll be using a polystyrene cup. Yeah. It looks like the oil has reached its temperature, so let the experiment begin. Look closely. The cup has turned into a hard plastic disc. How is that possible? To explain this, we'll be using the following curve. A polymer has three states. The glass state, the rubber state and the liquid phase. In the glass state, the material is stiff and not elastic. The chains don't possess enough thermic energy to be able to move. Deformation can happen between atoms or atom groups, for instance, a side group that takes a different position. In a rubber state, parts of the polymer chain can move opposite each other because their thermic energy is not efficient to overcome the attractions between bonds. But the chains are still entangled, what means that they can't move relative to each other. The chains favor a form in which they can form as many conformations as possible. The stiffness of Young's modul modulus, E, is, is 1000 to 10,000 times lower than in the glass state. To go from the glass to the rubber state, the glass transition temperature, the Tg, has to be passed. This is the temperature where the polymer goes from the glass to the rubber state. It depends on the chain stiffness and the traction between bonds. The Tg of polystyrene is about 100 degrees Celsius. A normal polystyrene cup is in a glass state and the chains are like this. But when heated in oil of 120 degrees it overcomes its Tg and turns into the rubber state. The chains are now entangled. That's the reason why the cup collapses. Once out of the oil the cup cools down and passes the Gg again and lands back into the glass state and creates this form. It becomes a hard material again. This form of processing, called thermoforming, was used to make the original PS cup. Thermoforming consists of three steps, heating, forming and trimming. In this case, sheets of polystyrene are delivered and heated above 100 degrees Celsius with infrared at amateurs or an oven to bring the polystyrene in the rubber state. The plate is clamped into place and formed, in this case the cup. The mold is cooled so when the materials are formed it's brought back to the glass state and becomes a hard material again. In the last step the forms are trimmed. These characteristics expressed by the material above and below Tg gave rise to theories over half a century ago that tried to determine the exact glass transition temperature. Two of the most famous and arguable theories are the free volume and configurational entropy theories. Free volume can be understood as a space not occupied by the polymer molecules of a sample. The more free volume a sample has, more easily the polymer chains can move and with different physical conformations. A polymer cha chain exhibits more free volume at the ends of a chain than from units within the chain. Free volume is dependent of the 
temperature and on the number of polymer chain ends presented in the system. This idea of Clevon made it possible to create membranes from polymers that utilize their free volume in helping in the permeation of a certain permeate fluid. Now let's take a look of how a membrane made of polymers works. CSIRO with Hanyang University Korea and University of Texas have created a novel polymer membrane. In nature, pores within cell membranes called aquaporin can purify water. The pores of this polymer membrane mimic the special hourglass shape of the aquaporin. The narrowed neck only allows certain molecules to pass through. Compared to other pores, this shape separates molecules faster using less energy. Carbon dioxide and methane are always found together in natural gas wells. This technology has been shown to remove the carbon dioxide, an essential process for the gas industry, so that the natural gas can be used as a fuel. The biomimetic design principle can also be used to develop low energy methods for water purification and desalination. In salty water, for example, the sodium and chloride ions carry a shell of water making them too big to fit through the pores. Low energy methods for water purification are critical for Australia's social and economic growth. The Configurational Entropy Theory known as the Gibbs and DeMartieu theory, was brought into light by the Cosman paradox. The Cosman paradox argued that as the temperature decreased significantly below the glass transition temperature, the entropy difference between the liquid and its crystal diminishes at a certain temperature. The third law of thermodynamics shows that the entropy of the liquid cannot be less than its crystal. The Gibbs and DiMarzio theory is a thermodynamic approach that treats the glass transition as a cooperative process, where the degree of cooperativity increases when the temperature decreases. The Cosman temperature is usually approximated to be between 20 to 50 degrees lower than the observed glass transition temperature. But it is almost impossible to reach that temperature because of how long the wait is for complete equilibrium within the polymer. The following video shows how the configurational entropy in a compound starts to increase as the temperature starts increasing. You can see that there is an increase in the random movement and an increase in the intensity. The lattice model of Gibbs and DiMarzio is a minimal model for polymers which incorporate an intermolecular bond energy which regulates the number of empty lattice sites and an intermolecular stiffness energy which controls the temperature dependent shape changes. It predicts the existence of a true second-order transition at the temperature T2, which is very similar to the Cosman temperature. The number of allowed arrangements of molecules decreases with decreasing temperature because the number of holes decreases and the configurational entropy of the molecule decreases too because the chains favor low energy states at lower temperature. This figure depicts the relationship of the thermodynamic properties and temperature of the amorphous and crystallized state. As a liquid melt of a crystal is cooled rapidly, 
recrystallization may be prevented and the slope of the equilibrium liquid line may be followed below the melting temperature, resulting in a gradual decrease of thermodynamic properties below the melting temperature. This is the supercooled liquid state, in which the viscosity is low and the mobility of the molecules is high and they are able to follow any further decrease of temperature to attain equilibrium conditions. However, upon further cooling, at the glass transition temperature, the molecules cannot follow the decrease in temperature any longer, and the system solidifies. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like.